Um, seems a long time ago since we started off in It does, it seems a very long time ago. <laughs> so I think we were, yes, it was Holy Trinity South Shields this morning. What were your impressions of, of that visit? Oh, it was fantastic. I mean, the, 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 hearing the story from the head teacher about the kind of school it was when she first arrived and the way it's been turned round and the way she's brought the two schools together. Uh, and then um, sitting, waiting for the children to come to assembly, they were fantastic. They were so well disciplined, mm-hmm. uh, but in a, in a really reverent way. And clearly they understood they were coming into an act mm-hmm. of worship. Um, and you know whether that's just because it's discipline or whether it's because it's um, understanding. But when you actually get into the assembly itself, and uh, they do, they, la- they, they laughed, they joined in, they, uh, they value what was going on. But then there was a reverence mm-hmm. going out as well. So I'm hugely impressed. Mm-hmm. And then uh, going into year six class, and um, seeing them working. Their levels of concentration were brilliant. We had two photographers taking these photos around us, and yet they were still getting on with their work, and doing, and they would chat, but then they get back to their work. I'm enormously impressed. Great, great fun too. And, and just, just listening to you telling that, that sort of wonderful story, which helped the children to understand how, how much they were loved by God, uh, I, I just got a sense that this, was, this is sort of what gets you out of bed in the morning. Oh, I, I happily get out of bed to do an assembly, uh, very regularly, yeah, yeah. I'm, and just being with children, engaging with children, and, and with those who work with them. You know, uh, teachers and teaching assistants and, and other staff in schools are, are fabulous people. Mm-hmm. And when they've, when they've got a real sense of vocation to it and a real dedication to the, to the children, it's just it's brilliant. And I, I love visiting schools. And, yeah, great. Because, I mean, my, my sense in, in the time I've been here, that in a number of those really quite challenging communities, our church schools... Uh, just are making the most enormous difference to the lives both of, of those children we saw and often their parents because mm. their parents seem to, you know, are often starting to come into the school and feeling a bit less afraid. And, and that's, yeah, that's, that's, I think, quite a critical thing for schools mm. to understand that is that they're, they're not just working with the children, actually. Yes. They are working with the families mm. and the very best education is always um, school and parents working together, um, which, as a reflection, is also the very best of what happens when mm-hmm. churches are working with children. It's not when children are hived off into their own thing, but actually parents see that this is a partnership and you work in partnership mm-hmm. together. Now, now, we then moved on from that. We, we went to the cathedral, lots of enormous amount, amount of press interest in there, there was in indeed. You. Um, <laughs> was, it, was that your first visit to Durham Cathedral? Uh, not my first visit, no. but it was Rosemary's yes. first ever visit. Um, but the thing that struck me, you know, as you know, it's a glorious building. It's a fantastic mm-hmm. building. Uh, but the thing that impressed me today was the people. And I was quite taken aback by how, how far down the nave there were people sitting mm-hmm. who'd just come to, to welcome me. Um, and um, it was great to have children. And, and when we did the questions and answers, I loved the fact it was the children who had the courage yes. to ask yes. the questions. And the they, adults they, just seemed to sit there. And... They, they did. But yes. the children, and, and actually once they started, mm. they, were, they were into asking questions and they were, they were serious questions. Mm-hmm. It was great. Um, my sense is today we've we've had some significant media coverage mm. uh, across the northeast. Um, in all the interviews you did, what what was the sense you got about the things that that really were of interest to to the journalists? Uh, journalists, uh, genuine personal interest, something about who mm. I am and background and so on. Um, interest in the priorities about growing the church, about engaging with communities and seeking to tackle poverty. Uh, and the engagement with children and young people. So there was a genuine interest in, mm. in the priorities. Um, and then, uh, inevitably, there were also the questions about some of the, the issues that confront us in church, particularly women bishops and um, the issue of gay marriage. Mm. Those, those are the key things that we're asking. And, and then, I mean, you, you know, I think you, you made it very clear today, your, your sort of interest in, in communities, particularly those mm. communities that are struggling, um, and therefore it did seem reasonable that we should take you for your lunch to to Easington Colliery, yep. the most uh, most deprived community in, in, in the whole of the northeast of England. Um, what, what, what did you make of what we found there? Uh, the first impression is driving in and immediately you know it's a, a former mining community because of the nature of the buildings, the houses and so on. Um, then uh, going into the, the Methodist church and seeing, seeing a few of the, the people sat there eating lunch, um, it struck me that they were young, mm. on, on, on the whole. Um, we were obviously t- towards the end of lunch, and, they, and, and the volunteers said it had been quite a low day in terms of numbers. Mm. Um, 
uh, talking to the volunteers, uh, their enthusiasm, their love of the fact that this was churches working together, um, their conviction that they were offering some hope in a community that was struggling with hope. Um, so I actually, it was a real mix of actually this feels like a community in deep need, even uh, you could perhaps say even depressed community, but in the midst of it, a sign of hope, a people who believe in hope, and the God of hope. Um, so, and talking to vicar and associate minister who are obviously both in, you know, firmly convinced that they are there because God wants them there to bring the good news. And of course, we, we, we managed to get you signed up there to the, uh, the, the, the Durham Credit Union. Yep. Um, and, and my sense is you, you, you've been doing quite a lot about credit unions. Mm. And just, just for the record, I think doing it long before Bishop Justin started <laughs> uh, sort of putting it uh, on, on the front page a, a month or so ago. Yeah, we, what, we, we, in Nottingham, we've, we've been <clears throat> run, with Nottingham Credit Union and the, the two, two shires for over a year. We've been running a, a campaign called 100 by 100. Uh, to encourage church members to join up to, to the, those two credit unions. Um, and we've had a significant amount of money in, put mm. in. Um, but uh, one of the things that um, impressed me about what I saw as the Durham Credit Union today was the real commitment they have to try and to get to the real, mm. really neediest people mm. and finding, trying to find access into those who most need that kind of support. Because I, I don't know whether or not you picked up, but it, but in fact the credit union is there every week, yes. collecting yeah. from from from, yeah. from, the, from those people. And, and one of the volunteers was telling mm. me about other access points that, and, and which was really impressive. Mm. And that, I mean, you 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 talk there, you know, about the church as one of the organisations that brings hope into mm. those communities, and and we saw an example of it today in the colliery. Um, what other ways do you see uh, the church bringing hope into some of these? communities where hope seems in rather short supply? Uh, simply by being there and staying there, that's the, f yeah. the, the first thing. Uh, help with uh, children, with parenting, grandparenting. Uh, I think looking at how can we work with the local community, with local businesses to uh, raise aspirations about uh, schooling and education. Where can we create or help create jobs and hope of jobs um, it's no there's no easy answer to that but actually the long-term solution to lifting mm. people out of poverty is helping them find mm. sustainable jobs um, one of the things that struck me in conversations in Easington was, was one person said to me um, this community hasn't been short on ideas and initiatives for, mm, yeah. but n none of them have been about long-term sustainable um, enterprise mm. and economic growth and it's how do we engage how do we encourage that mm. i have no magic bullets mm. but we the church must be part mm. of that conversation and presumably the fact that we have uh, in that particular case two clergy who are showing a strong commitment mm. to that place is, says something about god's commitment absolutely to that place even when it hope does look as if it's in short supply yeah and uh, they're both very enthusiastic mm. which yes. is great and and willing to try new ideas yes and I, that's and both, by the way, Durham Ordinance, just very, very good. Yes, <laughs> but, yes, uh, but I, people. Yeah, we have to we have to think more creatively. Mm. Um, clearly, some of the old solutions, both for church growth, mm. but also for community growth and development, are not working. Yeah. So, where's the creativity mm. in finding fresh ways forward? Um, and, and creative development will always mean we'll try some things that won't work, as well as then discovering things that will. Mm. And finally, we've, we've come here to Barnard Castle, very, mm. very, very different for, from Extremely Easington different. Colliery, and you've had a chance just to, to chat to some local, local people. Um, any impressions about, about things here? Um, a lot of the conversations with people from the outlying villages, and uh, telling me actually how small some of those villages are, uh, the, the, some of the, the struggles that they're, they're, therefore there are. Mm -hmm. um, there was one couple who were telling me about, you know, well, there's only six of us and they have a service every fortnight, but then quizzing further, that's 10% of the population. Mm -hmm. Well, if we had 10% of the population of a city church, we would be over the moon, wouldn't we? So um, it's, it's sometimes it's getting a balance mm -hmm. on that. Uh, but that's been a very helpful contrast with, mm -hmm. obviously, with, with the urbanness of South Shields mm -hmm. and Easington and to 
get the, the rural bit to Durham and um, I look forward to getting to know mm. both. They've all been encouraging Rosemary and I to go walking up Teesdale yes. and Weardale. Absolutely. Which we will. Which will be wonderful. Yeah. Any final overall? You, I mean, you, you, you are now unfortunately signed up to this job. I think I'm not sure that you could, you could walk away after I wouldn't use the word unfortunately, the Mark. Um, a, f- a final sort of impression. Uh, the warmth of the welcome has been fantastic. Mm. I mean, the, the, you know, the, 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 the applause in the cathedral, the, the genuine warmth of people, uh, say, and, and the fact that Lord Lieutenants and sheriff, High Sheriffs and uh, leaders of communities have come out to say hello to us and welcome us has, has been mm. brilliant. Um, so uh, uh, the, the, the diocese has, has done itself proud in presenting itself as a, a warm, friendly diocese, warm, friendly community. Um, and so we look forward to coming and uh, sharing with them. And um, it's always a bit odd at this stage because yes. we kind of disappear off the mm. scene a bit and then reappear permanently in the new year. Um, but uh, it's certainly given me lots of um, longing to get, come and get going. So just, just finally, um, put you on the spot a bit, three things that we might be praying for, for you and Rosemary, uh, between now and the new year when you come to be with us. Uh, one would be praying about the leaving of Sutherland and Nottingham, yeah. because obviously that's um, going to be a real mixed... Yeah. The sadness mm. at leaving friends behind mm. um, and saying uh, I think ending well saying farewell well mm. is really important so that would be number one prayer uh, number two would be the whole process of moving settling in mm. um, it would be the first time in our lives that we have uh, since we first married of moving in without children mm. and that's a big yeah. difference um, uh, and then the, the third would be um, praying about, uh, and this probably ought to be number one, praying that we would be kept faithful to Jesus. That's, that's our primary mm. calling. Mm. Stay faithful to Jesus and live for him day by day. Well, thank you for that, because I, I feel confident that from today on there will be many, many churches and many individual Christians across the diocese praying just those three things for you. Thank you. We look forward to having you with us, Paul. I really look forward to it, Mark. Thank you.